Hello. In a previous video, we discussed the monitors section of the DTS Content Creator AAX plugin. In this one, we'll go over the renderer input. The first type of input we're going to go over are the beds. Beds can be either 7.1 or 7.1.2. As you can see, I've instantiated a 7.1.2 instance, giving me a total of 10 inputs. You can manually assign each input as a static object for screen, wall, and ceiling positions. It is far easier to select the instance as a bed, which will auto-populate each input in Pro Tools channel order. The one channel type that must be in the beds is the LFE. There are no LFE objects, so this must be in the beds. These inputs show up in Pro Tools channel order for ease of mixing for Pro Tools bus directly into your beds. At the bottom, you'll see system calibration. This allows for Pro Tools delay compensation to accurately align both audio and automation during real-time rendering and exports, even in complex sessions. In a later video, we'll go over the procedure for setting this up. Solo and Mute are accessible from Renderer Input, DTS Content Creator Panner, and DTS Control. The beds have no panner associated with them, so you can only solo and mute the beds from this instance or DTS Control. The settings page is the same as in DTS Monitor, which we went over in that video. These settings follow across the plugin, so there's no need to set it up more than once. Additional instances of renderer input are where you'll set up your object inputs. Each input is assigned to a DTS Creator Panner. In a video on IO setup and routing, we will discuss how to get from the panner to the renderer input. But in this plugin, we are concerned with how the panning metadata gets to the renderer. You can manually assign each input. Each of these represents the panner I have available in this session and they are already assigned. I can clear the assignment for every instance or just this instance of the renderer input. I now have all the dialog objects available to me, but the music objects are all still assigned. I can manually assign them, which is useful if they're not in order. I can assign dialog objects 1, 2, four, then three, if that is the order that the audio is coming in from the Pro Tools bus. But you probably won't want to do that. So we will clear this instance and auto-connect this instance. Now they're all back in order. The order these connect in is defined by the order that the DTS Creator Panner is instantiated in Pro Tools. On dialog tracks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, there are DTS creators with that track name associated with them. If I change the order of the tracks by moving three in front of two, I haven't changed the instantiation order. The easiest way to do that would be to close the session and then reopen it. That would change the instantiation order to the track order. To put them back in order, I would move the track, then close and reopen the session. To manually change the order, I can just deactivate the plugin, then go back to the renderer input and clear this instance and then auto connect this instance. Now you can see that number three is missing. If I reactivate, then go back and clear and auto connect, you can see that number three is at the end because that is the last plugin instantiated and not the last plugin in the track order. We have two options to correct this. You can close and reopen the session, or you can deactivate all the plugins in that group and then reactivate them. This forces them to instantiate in the track order. Now we can clear and auto connect and they will auto-populate back in the correct order. This is why it is important to know what order you added the plugins to the session before you auto-connect. We have the system calibration section, which we will go over later, and the settings icon, which is the same as every type and instance that we've gone over before. That is all for the DTS Render Input plugin. Join me in our next videos where we will get into the DTS Creator Panner plugin.